Normally I don't do unboxing videos, but I was so impressed with the quality of the packaging and everything else with this, I wanted to uh, give everybody a, a quick overview. So this is the X-Tool D1 Pro laser engraver and cutter. They were running a special for Halloween, so I decided to pick it up. So first thing you see, manuals, and this is um, a sample of different materials and stuff that you can uh, play around with. So I haven't taken it any further than this yet, so I want to uh, take a look at the manual and see how involved it is. I don't think it's too involved to set it up. Quick start guide and instructions. I got the feeling that you're paying a little bit more for this one than some of the uh, competitors, but based on the quality of the packaging, the quality of the manuals, and everything I've read about them, it seems like uh, you're probably getting what you pay for. So, very nice. So I'm not going to assemble it on camera. I'm just going to uh, show you guys how this is uh, packaged. I mean, cut foam. Everything's got its own place. Here's the laser module. I did order. This is a blue light laser module, which I believe is um, intended for engraving on paper, wood plastics, that kind of thing. I also got the infrared laser module which is designed for engraving on steel, stainless steels, etc. Uh, yep, very nice. Alright, well, I'm going to put this together and uh, and we'll see how it works. One of the reasons I bought this particular laser engraver is because of the infrared head which is supposed to be specifically designed for engraving and scoring metal. In particular they say uh, stainless steel, steel, brass, um, and in the machine shop that uh, should come in pretty handy I think. So one of the first things I wanted to do is see how it works on uh, steel to start with. So I made four test coupons you can see. They're all mild steel uh, finished in four different ways. Starting at the upper left this piece has been uh, after finishing on the shaper was polished uh, the piece next to it on the right is the piece that was just finished on the shaper. The piece in the lower left corner was finished on the shaper, polished, and then cold blued. And the piece on the bottom right was finished on the shaper and then cold blued. So the two on the left are just polished in addition. So as you can see, the engraving being done on the first one in the upper left I'm using what is called score mode, uh, where basically it uh, cuts the outlines of the letters. Uh, and I'm going to be engraving the same pattern, uh, test pattern, with uh, the indicator as to uh, the settings that I'm using in the software on each one. And uh, as it's done, then I'll. Uh, bring you back and show you the results on all four of these.
these are the four test coupons that I uh, engraved and uh, the results were mixed so um, I'm gonna zoom in on, on them a little bit so you can see obviously as I got towards the higher power output the 100 indicates 100 percent power it uh, showed up a lot better so the first coupon here on the left you can still see it's been a little while you can still see the um, score and engrave on all of them. Obviously the, the most effective one was the 100% power. Um, now none of these were multiple pass. These were all single pass. So if I were to do multiple passes, especially with the higher output, I think it would work very well. The next one um, so this one was the polished one. This, the next one, that was just the shaper finish one. You can't even see the the first two anymore. The 75% score, 75% engrave, and 100% engrave. The 100% engrave worked very well. You can still see it. In fact, it's actually holding up better than the um, than the polished surface. Then the polished and blued, you're not really able to see anything of the first, the lowest power score. None of the scores really seem to show up very well. Uh, surprisingly, the 75% power engraving showed up better than the 100% power engraving. And I'm guessing that that has to do with the oil left on the blued surface. I did not wait and these had a little bit of an oil on them um, so I think if I would have dried them off better uh, it might have had better results. Pretty much the same with the non-polished and blued. Um, again the one that seemed to show up the best was this one. Um, however uh, like I said, I, I did not wait after bluing these very long to engrave them. So I have some other test patterns that I did. Yeah, that were just engraving all at 100% power. Some of these with multiple passes. Um, although one pass seemed to uh, to work pretty well, um, 80 is the speed that the laser head is moving, so 40 is slower. Um, so the 180 and two and three and four seem to work just as well as the 140, three, four. Um, the Plain steel just finished on the shaper, no polish. Again, multiple passes seem to uh, to hold up better. So uh, yeah, so if I do any more of this, definitely got to see about doing multiple passes. And 100% uh, uh, power seems to work best play it around with it some more and try some other materials but save these so I have some references anyway thought you guys might be interested thanks and uh, take care